What you are here doing for me, you are doing for all. And what you are doing for all, you are doing for God, Mrs. Eddy assured workers in her household. God will bless you, dear ones, for your loving service to me. Her Chestnut Hill household family included housekeepers, cooks, seamstress, groundskeeper, houseman, night watchman, coachman, secretaries, and metaphysical workers. All of these dear people had left their homes and had come as associate workers in our leader's house to serve her and the cause of Christian science. Adam Dickey. Calvin Fry was the comrade in arms from the battles of the earliest days. He has stood by my side to help our cause 21 years, she once said of Calvin. He has done more practical work in my behalf than any other student. Laura Sargent had been in the household longer than anyone except Calvin, serving as a constant companion and assistant to Mrs. Eddy. Mrs. Eddy's young, English-born personal maid, Adelaide Still, like Calvin and Laura, had come with her from Pleasant View as had John Salkow, the hardy Kansas farmer who was her groundskeeper. Housekeepers Martha Wilcox, Minnie Scott, and seamstress Nellie Eveleth were among those who cared for the home, while the metaphysical workers cared specifically for Mrs. Eddy. What Mrs. Eddy required of those about her was the mental support which she found necessary in order that she might be uninterrupted in her work for the cause and for mankind. Adam Dickey. Adam Dickey joined the household as metaphysical worker and secretary a week and a half after the move to Chestnut Hill. He left his family and students behind in Kansas City. Soon after he arrived, friends asked how long he was going to stay with Mrs. Eddy. The answer is, until she is ready to send me home. Rather indefinite, but I am doing as she is, waiting on God. Adam Dickey. Reverend Irving Tomlinson served Mrs. Eddy in various capacities in Concord and Chestnut Hill during 12 years. William Rathbun of Colorado was called to the Chestnut Hill household in November 1908. His wife, Ella, joined them as a metaphysical worker the following year. All in the household worked prayerfully to meet whatever needs arose. The metaphysical workers were assigned to what Mrs. Eddy termed the watch, set periods of systematic prayer about specified problems. Watchers were scheduled for two-hour periods, depending on the need, sometimes around the clock. Mrs. Eddy was keenly aware whether each individual's metaphysical work effectively demonstrated what she taught them. One evening, Mrs. Eddy assigned Martha Wilcox a problem to handle during her watch. I worked the greater part of the night. In the morning, she called me to her and said, Martha, why did you not do your work? I replied, Mother, I did. She said, No, you didn't. You had a good talk with the devil. Why did you not know God's allness? I said, Mother, I tried. And her reply was, Well, if Jesus had just tried and failed, we would have no science today. Then she had a card hung on the inside of the door to my room, on which was printed in large letters, Faith without works is dead. I looked at that for two weeks. Martha Wilcox. As Mrs. Eddy turned her attention to the tasks ahead, she was also turning her great barn of a mansion into a home she would grow to love. She had the room next to her study refurbished to be her parlor. Her rose-colored furniture was brought down from Pleasant View and new wallpaper matched the furniture. A door connected the parlor to her coat room, study, and bedroom. These modest four rooms were to be the heart of her home for the next three years.
this parlor became a kind of family room for her and her household. Often after Mrs. Eddy returned from her drive, the members of the family would gather in the pink room and sing for her. Mrs. Rathvon with her beautiful soprano, Mrs. Sargent singing good alto, Mr. Fry with a surprisingly good tenor, and Mr. Dickey's fine bass made a splendid quartet. I would stop outside and listen. John Salkow. Workers had leisure moments to pursue interests such as astronomy. Mrs. Eddy purchased a telescope so some of them could go on the roof in the evenings to study the stars. Several were amateur photographers, like Irving Tomlinson, snapping a photo of the squirrel they nicknamed Spike. It's not clear which of them snapped Adam Dickey studying late at night. Members of the staff went off on picnics, bicycle rides, and an occasional automobile trip, including a visit to an air show at a field on Boston Harbor, an event in which Mrs. Eddy herself showed great interest. But most of their hours, day and night, were devoted to assisting Mrs. Eddy's work and maintaining the home in which she could do it. There was a group of women practically all of whom had left their own homes, some of whom were practitioners, who took care of Mrs. Eddy's entire home. I wish you might have heard her expressions of gratitude to those who were caring for her home and what it meant to her to have such a place in which to do her work and carry on the movement of Christian science. Martha Wilcox Mrs. Eddy had a deep affection for all her household family. When Laura Sargent came down with a physical problem and went away for a few days to recover herself, Mrs. Eddy missed her and kept asking when she was coming back. Adelaide still recalled. She asked me what the trouble was with Laura, and I told her she was just tired out and needed a rest. Mrs. Eddy immediately took a pad and wrote a statement and a treatment for the benefit of all. The Christian scientists at Mrs. Eddy's home, it began, are the happiest group on earth. Their faces shine with the reflection of light and love. Their footsteps are not weary. Their thoughts are upward. Their way is onward. And their light shines. Laura overcame the problem and returned a day earlier than expected. A happy surprise for Mrs. Eddy. She clapped her hands and said, Oh, good. Mrs. Sargent came in, and Mrs. Eddy took her face in her hands and kissed her, first on one cheek and then on the other. She could not make enough of her. Adelaide still. The main object in the thought of everyone was to do what he could to serve Mrs. Eddy. She was endeavoring to live and carry on the work which God had given her to do. Adam Dickey Their leader's message of praise for her home and household continued. The world is better for this happy group of Christian scientists. God is glorified in his reflection of peace, love, joy. When will mankind awake to know their present ownership of all good and praise and love the spot where God dwells most conspicuously in his reflection of love and leadership? <laughs>